I love doing reviews of new products when they first come out. New stuff, so much fun, so cool. It's great to see you know, how developers and designers are changing things. Uh, but I think it's great to also review and look back how something has stood the test of time. And today I am going to give you the do's, don'ts and tips for the Hobie Pro Angler. And I've spent over 250 days in that boat uh, guiding and fishing from it. And so I hope this is really helpful if you're considering a Hobie Pro Angler. I am now on my fifth Hobie Pro Angler 14. And I remember uh, the first, uh, first one I had it just had forward drive. It didn't have reverse. It didn't have 360. None of the new developments that Hobie has come out with over the years. And I remember having to take the drive out with those two little clips, clip, clip, pull it out, spin it around 180 degrees, throw it back in there to be able to go in reverse. And I would do that a lot. Uh, guiding, I would pull up alongside one of my clients and I'd pull my drive out, stick it around reverse, hold on to their, their kayak, and then pedal to kind of hold them in position. We fish in Puget Sound, so we have a lot of current. Uh, there's also some wind, and we're fly casting towards the, the bank, and so you ha it's pretty precise. You wanna, there's kind of the zone you, ha you have to be in, and it's really easy to drift out of that zone, so holding someone's boat. Um, and the whole time, I'm like, man, if they could come up with reverse for this thing, that would just be, it would make it perfect. <laughs> so, and lo and behold, not only do they have uh, reverse but now they even have the 360 drive which I'm, I'm gonna do a review on both of these so if you're looking at getting a pro angler I would highly recommend getting the 14 instead of the 12 the 14 being longer actually is a faster boat there's a lot more stability uh, as well so it's rated for another hundred pounds uh, but you just feel the added stability when you're standing up in it especially when you're fly casting and kind of moving around the added stability is huge for those of you that have longer fishing rods, like fly rods, fly, an average fly rod is nine feet long. Uh, a lot of spinning rods, especially for like salmon, will be you know maybe eight, eight and a half, nine feet. Uh, a lot of the jigging rods I use for kings are nine foot three. The internal rod storage that the that the pro angler has fits those longer rods much better. Um, the internal rod storage in those 12 foot boats only really accommodates rods when they're divided in half or uh, really short rods that are like seven feet or less. Um, so sometimes what I'll do for rods that I'm gonna be using a lot, uh, I'll, instead of putting the rod tips in there, I'll put kind of put the butt section of the rod in there and have the, the tip going back. And that's a great way to be able to just grab the rod real quick to be able to, to switch out and use something different. A lot of times I'm bringing um, I'm bringing a lot of rods with me because if I'm guiding, I have two or three clients on the water. And so I'm gonna probably have two, two rods on average for each angler. So a lot of times there'll be a, a, a rod set up with a floating line and an intermediate line or a sinking line. Um, and so for each, and then I might even have like a faster sinking line. So maybe for, uh, for, for two anglers, I might have uh, five or six rods. And then for three anglers, a lot of times I'll have six rods. So having those internal rod storage uh, compartments, um, th those things are just absolutely wonderful. When you're transporting the boat and you're using the Hobie wheel cart, use the scuppers that are that are in front of the seat instead of the scuppers behind the seat. It kind of will teeter-totter and balance out the boat and make it a little bit easier uh, to be able to cart that thing around. A lot of times when we're launching, we might cart the those, <laughs> those kayaks Oh geez, maybe 50 yards, 100 yards, something. I mean, we'll move them quite a bit. So having that balance definitely helps you out in the long run. Now, if you're gonna be transporting your kayak, the, the, a pickup truck bed is absolutely the way to go. But if you have a bed that is uh, shorter than six feet, so mine I think is like six and a half feet. I have a Toyota Tundra uh, double cab. So I got like a six and a half foot bed and then plus the tailgate. So if you have a smaller truck than that, like maybe you have a Toyota Tacoma four-door or a um, Chevy Colorado or a Nissan Frontier or something like that, one of those mid-size uh, pickup trucks with a four-door, especially those, those shorter beds, you're gonna wanna have a, uh, an extension to be able to help carry that thing around. And please, for your safety and for the safety of those that share the road with you, please do not car top a Pro Angler 14. Uh, at 120 pounds, it's most likely too heavy for the rating of your factory racks. Uh, and if you, you know, God forbid you get in an accident, but if you do, uh, 
you do not want a 120 pound projectile going flying anywhere. Um, it, it can be hard to strap those things down. And in an accident, I would imagine your roof rack might get ripped off your vehicle. So, um, so really a trailer or a pickup truck are the, are the best ways to, to transport Hobie Pro Anglers. But I've also seen people slide them in the back of a minivan and leave the hatch up um, or in the back of an SUV and leave, leave that back hatch up. And that, that works. Um, but if you're fishing the salt water, a lot of times you don't want to have a salty boat in the back of your vehicle, but you can put down a tarp or a blanket, something like that. So the nice thing about a trailer is that once you are done fishing and it's loaded up on the trailer, now you have a place to store the boat too. And you just kind of wheel that trailer around and it can just live on that trailer. So I think about at the end of the day, when you're tired from fishing, having to try to load a boat up on the top of your vehicle, man, that just sounds horrible. And then to get home and then you're like, oh, last thing I want to do is unload that thing. So now the, one of the great things about kayak fishing is that it allows you to, to use the boat often, get out on the water a lot for a short amount of time. Uh, it's not like having a power boat where you have to have all of the breakdown and wash down and all that kind of uh, maintenance. So, um, so if you can move your pro angler easily with a pickup truck or a trailer, you will use it more often. A lot of times I don't like front hatches on kayaks. Uh, they just are, they're hard to get to and hard to really kind of uh, store things in. But in the Pro Angler 14, that front bucket hatch is incredible. I love it. I put a big gear bag up there or I'll put my backpack and other gear up there. Uh, use that thing. It's easy to get into. Even if the water is a little bit rough, it's easy to grab onto the H rails and kneel down and be able to get in to that front bucket. When you're shifting with the 180 drive, make sure that your feet are together. So one of the don'ts is don't have your feet kind of like this because those blades are then flat under the boat and they, it makes it really difficult for them to turn, turn over. So if your feet are together, uh, that's the best time to shift. Shift nice and slow. You're not starting up a lawnmower. Uh, so just a nice steady pull and don't pull up, pull along the, the deck of the boat. So reach down and pull down. That, that makes a more positive shift. If you're gonna shift, just slow down and just wait a second before throwing in reverse. It's just like your car. Uh, you're not gonna just you know, be moving and slam it into reverse. Uh, it's not good on your car. It's also not good on a, on a Pro Angler 180 drive. Now in the 360, go nice and slow with that drive, especially if you're moving and you, you wanna turn. If you're already stopped, it makes it a little bit easier to turn that, that dial. Uh, but then the other thing too is you wanna make adjustments to uh, your, your, your drive and the boat often. Historically, there were some issues with the uh, kind of the gear and, and kind of making sure that there was enough tension and all that kind of stuff. Well, you can break things and things can go very bad if you just ignore your setup and you don't make adjustments. So, um, so make sure that when you're done fishing, that things are, that things are set the way they're supposed to be, that things, everything feels good. Uh, we have a guy on our staff that uh, named Dave that's amazing. He's like a Hobie tech. And he, he is always just making sure that those 360s are just buttery smooth. And because of that, we, have, we don't have any issues with them. Okay, here's a do not in the Hobie Pro Anglers. Really, if you, if you can avoid surf launching, don't do a surf launch. Uh, it, is, it is a really uh, difficult boat to try to fish in that environment. And, and the bigger problem is when you're coming back in, uh, the boat is difficult to paddle and kind of difficult to surf waves. So um, easy to capsize a pro angler in that kind of situation. And I love an Outback or Revolution for surf fishing. The pro angler is absolutely perfect and at home on protected waters like Puget Sound. Uh, even though that's the salt water and it's big water, uh, it's, it's great in Puget Sound because there's no, there's no swell or waves. Um, and then it's, it's excellent on lakes, especially large lakes. The pro angler can cover lots of ground, can really get you into a lot of spots that boats can't get into um, and can cover more ground than like inflatables like a float tube. Okay, to finish this video off, let's talk about disastrous stuff. What to do if you fall out of a Hobie pro angler. Uh, it's not as easy as many would think. So if you think you're going to go in uh, it's better to give yourself over to it and throw yourself out of the pro angler. I know it sounds, sounds crazy, but here, here's the deal. The last thing you want to do if you feel yourself tipping and falling out is to hold on for dear life and to roll the boat over. 
the the pro angler uh, upside down can be very difficult to write because that big comfy chair that we all love uh, it, it, it creates a lot of resistance and then you just have this flat deck that uh, it just doesn't want to roll so if you do um, if you do feel yourself going throw yourself out it's easy just to swim back to the to the back of the boat there's a big bar back there you can grab a hold of that and push down on it and then reach up and climb it's easy to climb up on the back of uh, of the boat flip the seat down and just climb over the seat it's it's stable it's super easy to do if you do happen to roll that kayak over and it's upside down the way to flip it over that i found the easiest is to tie a rope off on one of the h rails throw that over the boat swim to the back of the boat and climb up on uh, the kayak from the back and just grab a hold of that boat and throw yourself off the other direction and it will flip over the boat and ride it very easily now of course you just threw yourself back in the water but then just go back to the back climb back up that's the easiest way to get in there um, i've never fallen out of a pro angler in in hundreds of days of fishing out of it um, I, I probably shouldn't have just said that. <laughs> I hope the girl pro is running when it does finally happen. Um, but, um, oh man, I'm, now I'm like cracking myself up and forgot what I was going to say. Yeah. Just think about like falling out of that thing now. It ain't going to happen. So, so I have gone out on the lake and just walked around on the boat, stood on the front, stood on the back, tried to stand on the sides. Like I flipped the thing over, uh, you know, I, so I've experimented with how to get back in, into this thing. And I would recommend that you do the same. So go out to a lake, go in the summertime when it's nice and warm and uh, flip that thing over and work on getting it uh, right the right way. Uh, especially if you're somebody that fishes on your own, you need to know how to be able to do that um, just for safety reasons. So be careful out there. Kayak fishing is a lot of fun. It gives you access to so much water, uh, but we want you to be safe out on the water. I hope this video is helpful to you. If you're considering getting a Hobie Pro Angler, please let us know if you have questions or comments down below. I'd love to hear your do's, don'ts, and tips if you do own a Hobie Pro Angler, and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.